Thanks so much. Um, so again, my name is Sarah Dyer, Senior Director of Operations with Event Connect. And Event Connect is a end-to-end -end event management software solution that encompasses the entire lifespan of an event. Um, we really pride ourselves in empowering amazing experiences, and that's what we're going to talk a bit about today. So to tell you a little bit more about myself, I do feel like a fraud up here because I actually don't play hockey and I actually don't even know how to skate. Um, but what I do share with all of you is an incredible passion for coaching and my coaching background in alpine ski racing. Um, so I have uh, spent a lot of time with the development of athletes in between U10 and U16 in a train-to-train -train module. Um, also with master's athletes as well, which is a really kind way of saying um, adults and seniors. And I also do a lot of work with coach development. So as soon as coaches finish their online modules or on snow modules, they come back to me and I get to work with them to teach them how to coach. So just maybe from a show of hands, and I can't really see many people with the bright lights up here, but how many people here actually run their own events, whether it's a tournament, skills camps, showcases, how many people here run their own events? I think I can see some, some hands, all right. So what we do know when people do attend uh, events is things that they want are um, obviously an appropriate level of competition, great facilities to work within, clarity and confidence in the event that they're attending, and excellent accommodations and obviously um, value to match their experiences. So what we do see in the sports tourism industry is that a lot of these events aren't powered by data analysts or analytics. How are you taking the experience of your participants and putting those experiences back into running better tournaments and better events? So we know that how tech can provide better experiences, and we know that companies, even outside of the sports realm, those companies that do empower data analytics have gained a strategic advantage over their competition. And using a gut feel or your personal bias or subjective decisions isn't really enough to catapult you forward to having that competitive advantage. So when we use technology and enable technology into this space, we know that data is actually only as valuable as the insights that you're going to draw from that data. And the key to drawing real value from the data is identifying what data to use, and the metrics you use will determine how successful your data, uh, data decisions are. And obviously, the ones that you want to be focusing are the good ones that have the biggest impact. So when we enable technology, we are doing things like remaining competitive. We're able to draw now valuable insights from that information. We're able to have continued growth, actionable insights for detecting new or missed opportunities, and more agility. How are you able to re respond to what your participants are saying to now infuse that into your programs? We get into transparency. So what we call CSAT scores at Event Connect are customer satisfaction scores, which might be equivalent for you guys is a, a post-event survey. How are you taking that information and putting it back into your programs to inform strategy? This is what really helps your business and pushes it forward. We um, want to make sure that we're learning about our attendees. Do you know the who, what, where, when, and how of who's coming to your events? And are you able to take that information now and grow loyalty, inspire brand loyalty? Do they know who you are? Do they have a good relationship with your organization? And has that become a competitor, competitive differentiator for you? And what's the most powerful part of that is you start retaining participants. And when you can start retaining participants, they're going to start bringing others or more with them. So that power of referrals is incredible. And then when you're going to move into some data or decision making, um, you're focusing on your business impact. And now you're creating opportunities to drive profits through cross-selling and upselling and informed decisions. And the biggest part is that you're able to now know what your next move is. How are you going to use data to know your next move? So then we get into communication, and this is where I get a lot of eye rolls because we start talking about AI and bots and in automation. But we do have a screenshot up here of Eve, and Eve is our chatbot at Event Connect, and she's fantastic um, because she works 24-7. She takes no sick days, no vacation days. And there's no end to how many people that she can service at one time. 
So when we have our bots or our AI, what we are looking to do now is moving the redundant and the mundane off of our staff and into the bots or into automation. Because that allows our staff to start doing more valuable work for our organization and continue to push forward with strategy. So we really try to push that bots and automation is actually your friend and it actually has a huge place in today's society. We also move into self-service. So the face of COVID really changed how we interact with people. People really want answers like right now or yesterday. They don't want to wait. So how can you create self-service channels for your participants? Is that an FAQ section? Is that even just some top tips and tricks on your email responder, like an out of office? Thanks, your message has been received, but here's some questions that's probably gonna answer what you need to know. But knowing how to self-service and create that scalability and get those answers into people's hands as quick as possible all goes into that. But it also allows you to scale. And when you can scale, that's incredibly powerful. And we've done that at Event Connect. So during COVID, we managed to quadruple our company, which was insane, especially in this realm. But we only actually increased our staff by 40% because we found a lot of efficiencies through our automation and our chats and things like that. And also into feedback loops. So this is a, a screenshot right out of, our, out of our, one of our programs. So about 90% of our operations team is in Zendesk. So we've used a third party software, we've brought it in, it's our customer service CRM. But that CRM is now pulling incredible insight in for our staff, our development team and ourselves to go look at. We are touching base with almost 2,600 people a week when our customer service team is working with them. But through these feedback loops, we're able to now track the who, what, where, when, and how. So we know exactly who we're servicing. Is it a hotel? Is it a group? Is it a tournament director? Is it a team mom? Is it a player themselves? We know exactly who they are. What are their issues or what do they need help with? Why did they reach out today and needed our assistance? Uh, where are they going? What event is it? What association is it? What sport is it? You can see baseball needs a little bit more help than everybody else. But we know exactly who they are, when their travel dates are, SLAs, which are service level agreements, so we know how to prioritize what's come through. We know how quickly we're getting to them. And we have the how, which is, um, we have seven, over seven different ways someone can get a hold of us. And those are called omni-channel experiences, when we can provide high-level, very seamless customer service from seven different channels and we bring them into one for our team to service. So we're talking phone, email, chat, text, Facebook, Messenger, it goes on and on and on. So omni-level, omni-channel experiences. But what we've been able to do is that becomes our competitive differentiator. We are no longer a software with a service, we're a software as a service. And having that is being able to allow us to go in and now even track the profitability of our company, of our partners, of all the different events we put on, and bring that data forward when we're gonna look at post-event analysis. How did this event do? How did the participants feel? We've actually also been able to put this into our team, which is even a little bit better, we fostered greater teamwork with our staff. We've been able to kickstart career paths and understanding where people can go. And we've created empathy, which is actually very hard to do amongst the different departments. But what's been even more critical, at least from a director standpoint, is that we know what our next action is going to be. We have the data to go make objective decisions at a boardroom table based on data of what we need to do next in our company for not only our partners, but for ourselves as well. So when we look at measuring success, obviously there's a lot of ways to do it. You have all this data coming in and what the heck are you gonna do with it all? But we use a couple different ways. So we have our KPIs, our key performance indicators, and that's what keeps us moving every single day. All of the pistons are firing. We know that everything's working well. Something starts to slip in there. We need to, we need, sorry, we know right away, we need to jump in and see what's going on. We move into prioritizing key areas. We understand the context of what's going on, and we know what's going to have the largest organizational impact for the company. We work through OKRs. So I'm going to see, does anybody know here what OKRs are? Or has anybody used OKRs before? 
I think I see one or two hands. I highly suggest looking these up. <clears throat> they are objectives and key results. This is how we set goals in our organization. These are lofty, very high-end goals that we are going to go set for ourselves, and how, and we set those fiscally, and how does every person going to write their goals towards that fiscally, or sorry, quarterly, into, their organ, um, into those goals. And I can do a whole other chat on OKRs, but do look them up. It's an amazing system for goal setting in your organization. But it really has an impact on what are you going to do, how are you going to do it, and why are you going to do it. We get into our feedback to features. Um, kind of on that feedback loop that we saw before, but understanding that you need to let data-based lessons shape your business. So we know that we're going to go realign our organization and our culture to make sure that everybody knows the value of data and how to make the most of it. And then we get into learning loops, which I'm sure most of you do with your coaching, because I know I use a method of this when I'm on the hill as well. But we look at how are we going to go implement, how are we going to go measure and analyze, how are we going to go refine that, and how are we going to go document that. And that loop never, ever ends. It keeps on moving. So our vision to reality, <clears throat> I feel like that's my husband in his Leaf jersey all the time. But um, we get to our vision of reality, which is start somewhere. So if you're going to go try to implement data into your organization, how are you going to do it? And start somewhere. We started with a wall and post-it notes and a Sharpie. And we literally put these post-it notes on the wall and we moved them around. And if I never have to see another post-it note for the rest of my life, I'm going to be okay with that. But we, that's where we started. And you just need to start somewhere. Know what it means to be data-driven. Make sure you are getting the right data into the right hands of the people in your organization so that they can go make decisions quickly and efficiently to impact your participants. Enhance, um, embrace new technology, sorry. You know, you need to make sure that your staff comes around the change, but you need to ensure that you're enticing innovation and collaboration. That's a really big part of it. Take your time when you're implementing technology, brand the experts, experiment, simplify, do things one at a time, and invest in training. That's a really big part of it. Disrupt your culture, bring in a change agent. Um, you know, just shake things up, whether it's the new technology or if it's that. Building literacy is a big one. We have new staff starting at Event Connect. They get a glossary because we need to make sure everybody is speaking the same language, bringing everything on board. The next two are probably the most important that I think. Number one is keeping it in the business. If you're going to go implement data into your organization, that data now has a permanent seat at the boardroom table. There's never an option not to have the data present. So it needs to stay within your business and ensuring that change is not failure. When you're in those feedback loops, and if you're looking at change as failure, you are going to fail. You need to look at change as growth and change as opportunity. And that's the way it has to be looked at. But the minute you look at change as failure, the whole thing is going to fall apart. And last but not least here, as we wrap up quickly, our players are always, always evolving, and great leaders need to do the same. So we need to understand that experiences are just as important to the game as the wins and the losses. If anything, experiences help shape the impact of the wins and the losses. Know what is happening in your organization through data. Make sure that you can ex focus on the experience and also focus on the customer. When you can do a shift from only focusing on your organization and over to focusing on the customer, there's an incredible ROI to that when you're able to make that shift. Realign your culture to understand the value of data and ensure that when you do so, it's informing strategy. Again, it has a seat at the boardroom table. And ensure that you are creating conversations and connections. Create opportunity for people to come together, talk about their experiences, and when they do that, the power of word of mouth and sharing things along. So that's it for me today. Uh, keep it short, it's the 15 minutes. But if you like to talk more, we're outside. Always happy to continue the chat. But enjoy the conference, and hopefully we'll see you all soon.